emergency request data bank. I'm currently on the run from the Imperial Harmon Army. For some reason they think I've stolen their ruler's favorite animal, and I request the assistance with rigging some kind of means of defense. How to Rig in Sweet Harmony is a highly recommended ebook on the subject of rigging. Insert just five dollars a month for instant access. Sorry, do you not understand what I'm saying? I'm sure Ollie Putnam's rigging guide is amazing, but my ship is damaged. My oxygen levels are so low, my mind has turned to jelly, and I'm heavily outgunned, and the light bulb was blown from the navigation guidance system. I need to rig some kind of defense. Animator Oliver Putnam has over 20 years of experience and has worked for some of the biggest animation companies in Britain. I... A remarkable ebook containing over 350 fully illustrated, easy to follow pages is a must read. Oh, all right, let's rig a Toon Boom character. Could be a giggle. That's the spirit. Over 350 pages of pure, unadulterated Toon Boom. Harmony Learning. Download it right now. Hello. Um, what amazing things have I got to show to you today? Well, uh, as you may have guessed from the title, uh, Harmony 20 is out. Um, why they've decided to call it 20 as opposed to 18, don't know. Uh, I assume that it's probably something to do with the year 2020 or something, but they haven't told me. Um, either way, I don't care. I'm very happy about it. Um, I'm part of the uh, ambassador program for Toon Boom. Um, I'm not in. I'm not told to say these things believe me if i if i didn't like something i would just either keep mum or probably i would say it actually um but um they've been really kind to me and uh, they've allowed me to have a preview of t uh, harmony 20 for quite some time now so i've kind of already known the sort of bits and pieces that the software can do for a little while and help them with uh, bug extermination and things like that. But uh, suffice to say that I was bursting to tell everybody about what they were um, a few months ago because uh, I knew that they were going to be something quite special. Um, what's interesting about what they've done is that they've changed quite a lot of things that I didn't expect them to change, um, but largely, except for one thing. Um, but they've all been really useful. I can see how beneficial all of them are going to be for future rigging, and they're going to make my life as a rigger and an animator better. It's going to make it faster and more efficient and more fun to actually move the characters around. So let's get to it. Let me just uh, bring up the um, timeline here, and then let's bring up the node view. And uh, for a start, Let's turn off this uh, opening thing and uh, turn off the rendering. Uh, for a start, let's tidy this up because, you know, it's very important to tidy things up. Uh, this is new. This align nodes horizontally thing. And oh my word, doesn't it make things easier? Um, I can see this being extremely useful for just getting things in a line and then moving things around. That's really good. This is another good thing. Shumpf. Um, the amount of times when I've had to disconnect nodes and I have to go, eh, eh, eh. no, I can just go like that. That's wonderful, that little node cutter thing. Uh, another thing that I really like as well is if I want to put a node in before, I've had to go to the node library, find something, and go, eh, 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 eh. not anymore. I can click the enter key, and now I've got this wonderful little pull down menu, which allows me to. Uh, select whatever I want. So if I want a peg, I can just put a peg in there and do it really quickly. And it selects the last thing that I've uh, selected on the list. So if I want loads of pegs, I can do this sort of thing. Oops, not that one. Uh, there we are. That is a subtle little thing. It's friggin' wonderful. The other thing that is a subtle little difference here, which I hope that they will correct in a good way, is that previously I've wanted to try and create a, a drawing directly onto the node layer and haven't been able to do that before. Uh, a drawing, for some reason, uh, is called an element uh, in uh, node view and node library speak. And if I select it here, I'm now able to produce an actual vector drawing directly into uh, Harmony 
fresh, ready to go uh, in the node view. Before, if I try to do it here, I'll show you here that this is a normal element and it's a vector one. If I try to create an element here, uh, dragging something from the node library and doing it in that way, for some reason it interprets it in this kind of a way, which is totally useless. I can't uh, draw on it at all or do anything, because I can draw, uh, he says, on this one. Uh, so it's weird sort of little funny glitch, but I'm glad it's glitched in the correct way for this version. I just hope that eventually they'll correct this so that it matches. Um, but I'm happy for now that the fact that I can actually put drawings direct into the node view and couple them up is a massive, massive time saving. I don't have to keep doing it this way. So thank you very much, the gods of YouTube, uh, gods of Zoom Boom. Uh, now, uh, the drawing substitution window has had a few tweaks as well. Uh, so I'm just going to put the drawing layer in there like that. And uh, one, and uh, let's just, if I just go over here and then create a new one. Come on, you. Use it, you're doing it using that one. Uh, two, come on, three, there we go. And then I'm able to switch between them like I was always able to do. But now I've got the ability to edit um, the labeling of drawings in the drawing substitution window, which is very helpful and able to delete them as well and search for them as well. So uh, say, for example, I called a set of drawings uh, mouth something. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's OK. So you call it I don't know, mouth, let's say, or the num. Actually, let's call it number two in this sort of wordy way. Obviously it's here, but you would have like smile, happy, smile, so smile A, smile B, smile C, whatever. And you wanted to find that quickly. You could just type that in and it brings up the relevant substitution here in the search window here. Hugely useful. Um, this is also, I think, graphically tweaked a little bit, but um, either way, you could always do that before. But this, this ability to search and edit a little bit, Mwah! Absolutely fantastic. Love it, love it, love it. I'm going to get rid of that. Um, another little thing that they've introduced, well, not introduced, they've they've added it, uh, made it, improved upon it, is uh, the ability to easily create markers um, on the timeline view. Now, you could do this before, but these are a little bit more special. You can actually move them around now by dragging them, which you couldn't do before. And you can also set them over a long period of time. So if I say edit scene marker and I say I now want them to have a duration of five frames, you've got this big block of stuff which you can move around. I'm still going to be using personally um, the ability to um, actually mark. Let me just close that off. Uh, I've got to have something. Uh, let me just uh, maybe won't do that. Uh, hang on. Do, 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 do. Create drawing thank you very much uh, the ability to actually uh, create a uh, marked frame here I think there's a few new colors as well actually there's like white and black now which they didn't have before I, th I don't think they did anyway uh, pink as well I think there's that as well yeah pink and purple and goodness knows what else um, and the great thing about that is that they can also be moved around, but I can actually put these ones into the library. So if I have a marked area for master controllers or stuff like that, I actually put them into the library for later use. So that's really useful. But this is handy. And if you're trying to uh, show an animator uh, who's working on a scene, look, I think you need to look at this range of frames or this bit is a loop or something like that. This is a really nice, quick, easy way of, of uh, utilizing that and you can get rid of them like that. It, it, it's a lot more robust, and I, I get the impression that works better than the previous system because that had a few bugs in it, if I'm honest. So that seems, touch wood, to be working really, really well and really solidly. I love it. So that's good. Um, now, uh, a few other things before I get into the really meaty features. Um, there are a couple of improvements re with regards to um, drawing snapping and stuff like that. So uh, for a start, if I do a little drawing here, um, you'll notice that, uh, let me go to, no, hang on. 
There we go. You'll notice that whenever I have a snapping tool, instead of the sort of rather unusual uh, uh, icon that they had before, now it's a nice big strong meaty magnet, which everyone understands means snapping. It's a nice big bold symbol. Really appreciate that. And um, we have the ability now to align things as well. So if I duplicate that, so we now have got two uh, drawings that are exactly the same, the sort of 80 squiggle that we have here. Uh, I'm just going to add a peg to each one so I can actually move them around. Um, I've got, if I turn on that, you'll notice I now have the ability to align the artwork to either the center or the top or anything like that. So I really have now got the ability to match absolutely the artwork to each other through means of snapping. Um, and that is something that we haven't had the ability to do before uh, really as easily. So that is really useful. Um, I've still got to play around with that because obviously there's a bit of a gap there and you know stuff, but I'm pretty confident that I can sort of work that in to you know make sense to myself. Um, but you know, anyway, the ability to snap, I haven't been able to have at all before. This is also a slightly new feature, um, easy drag. Before, if you wanted to drag that, I would have to kind of still select the actual, let me turn that off, still select the actual artwork. If I turn that on, you'll see what I mean. So if I select that and drag there, I don't, I'm not able to grab hold of it. So for, especially for very fiddly, thin little lines, that was very tricky. Not a problem now, I just turn on easy drag and I can move anywhere in that bounding box and grab hold of it. That is super useful for very delicate little fiddly lines. I really appreciate that. And the ability to turn it on and off as well, really nice. So um, yeah, I think by default, I'm gonna be leaving that on in future. I am, yeah. So, okay, let's turn all those off. I think what else have I got here? Uh, dee -dee -dee. Let me just have a quick little look if there's anything else I've missed out because there's all sorts of funny little features. Oh, there's one other thing as well. Um, another drawing there. Uh, if you do want to use the brush tool, which I'm not against, but I prefer not to use it, but there might be a, t a technique that you can only uh, create using uh, the brush specific tools, like a particular texture you want or something like that, which you can't really get if I did uh, a vector. You can do textures, but they're a different kind of, of texture. They're different sort of abilities and uh, things that are available with uh, that kind of texture. It behaves in a slightly different way. So if you wanted this kind of thing, which is much more sort of natural based, you might want the ability to... Um, the benefit of a pencil tool is that you can get into the actual spine of the line and manipulate that. That's the big reason why any rigger prefers to use the uh, line tool over the pencil tool over the uh, brush tool. Whereas if you go over here, of course, you've got the sort of outer border and you're able to manipulate that. And it's all very clever and everything, but it's if you wanted to do the same thing here, move that over, it's actually a bit of a pain and bits of it disappear and everything else. However, Previously, you did have the ability to, now let me see, it's, pr I don't think I've actually put it on the uh, thing. Wait a minute, there we are, pop the centerline editor on, there we go. Uh, this gives you the ability to actually edit the spine of a pencil, uh, sorry, a brush drawn line. There you are, so it behaves in a very similar way to the pencil line. Now the downside previously has been that if I wanted to sort of edit that line and say, okay, well, I want to be able to manipulate that, but I don't want to manipulate that and blah, blah, blah. On a pencil line, you can do that. You can delete points and add points and whatever. Previously, you couldn't do that. Well, now you can with the center line editor tool. You can now get rid of points and manipulate this in a much more simple, simple way. So now you've got the ability to manipulate a brush line in a very similar way to a pencil line. It still has a few um, uh, reasons why you perhaps wouldn't want to do that for certain rigs, um, because certainly if you're creating a uh, fill, there is no fill line, if the actual fill line, if you were, in fact, let's try and do that now. Uh, da, 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 let me just 
get this off and let's create a circle using this. Now, if I were to fill this, I'll get uh, yellow, it goes to here because of course the line that it's filling up to is this one. And so it doesn't really behave in quite the comfortable way as a pencil line tool, which has its line actually in the center. And so it fills right up to that point. It covers that gap nicely. So it does have its drawbacks. Um, so it, it's not for everything. And you might want to have a combination of two elements here still, you know, pencil line and brush line and things like that. Having said that though, this makes using the brush tool a lot more viable for a lot more reasons. And even if you're not rigging, um, the ability to uh, essentially manipulate your model. Uh, let me just get that up again. Oh, sorry, I'm drawing with the wrong thing there. Right. <laughs> yeah, let's get that. I'm so excited. Um, so say, for example, that was an actual, so you'd, you'd cleaned a piece of conventional animation up and you were sort of neatly up, not quite like that, what am I doing? Like that. And then you wanted to tweak some in-betweens. Well, you can just go in there and, and so delete a few points and you know and start manipulating it like that um as so long as you've cleaned it up in the correct way you've got that ability to do that um it has a few issues there i've noticed i think it sort of bunches up when uh, when you delete points i think uh you know there may be a few things that you can still change let me just Go here. I'm sort of learning this new this new tool as well. You can change the smoothness of the line. It's best to try and keep the points as as uh, small as possible. You don't want tons of them to manipulate. You want to keep it uh, minimal. Um, there we go. That's that's a bit better. Um, so yeah, you know, and then you've got the ability to go in there using the contour tool and to sort of perhaps get rid of some points that are causing issues. Why would you want to go into this sort of depth? Well, it's certainly more beneficial if you're doing subtle in-betweens. So, um, uh, so if you were wanting to, uh, once you'd got the line work really nice for one bit, yeah, it's still a little bit weird, isn't it? Um, you could, probably that, no, okay. I think it probably works better for, um, sort of solid line work if I'm if I'm honest I think manipulating this too much might cause a little bit of an issue but certainly for small things um, but the benefit is is that you could rig your character in a sense just with one drawing that's cleaned up and this is just conventional animation cleanup and then you can just manipulate the lines rather than drawing them over and over again you've got all the line thicknesses preserved um, with this new ability to sort of gently massage the line. Ignore this ugliness. I'm sure it can be sort of rectified pretty easily. I'm just mucking about. But, um, you know, you can see the possibilities there are a lot easier to manipulate. And I'm not even touching the the uh, points here. I'm able to manipulate sort of the general plumpishness of the line. Um, you know, you're getting that sort of ugliness there again. But it's, again, that's me mucking about. That's me ruining the concept. Um but it, uh, it's a potentially really, really useful thing. I'll try it one more time without the actual texture and it should be able to get more of an idea because I do think I'm butchering a fantastic feature. Okay, so yeah, I'm able to manipulate the line in this much more general, squishy way. And if I want to get in there and have a bit more control, I can do. Um, but if I delete points, because it's not textured, I think you can get away with it a lot more on an untextured line. There we are. Yeah. Um, so it's it's still not as easy to control as a pencil line tool, but it's remarkably good. And uh, I can actually kind of recommend it as a technique now. So that's, that's really nice. Um, now then, time, I think. I can't think of anything else like that. So I think time for the really fun stuff now. So here we go. Now let's start with the perhaps least glamorous one, but extremely useful. Um, here is, let me just make that a smiling face. And if I have a look at, uh, this comes up quite often uh, some, uh, with uh, certain rigs. You want the ability to change 
the image from one thing to another. This is quite good for uh, mouths that need to go into profile, uh, stuff like that. Uh, things that you still need a set of like the reason I say from going from front to profile is because you'll still have a set of drawing substitutions for happy smiley s sad talking but you want to sort of change the position of the mouth rather than the actual mouth words themselves so if you sort of lip sync to load of stuff provided you set it up in a certain way the lip sync would still correlate despite the fact that you have also got it in a different um, drawing position. And I'm talking about drawing position, you know, a set of drawings. So here we've got um, two faces, a happy face and a sad face, and they're linked to an image switch. Now, previously, if you want to use an image switch, you have to go into, let me find it on the timeline here. You have to go into the parameters and change the port index from 0 to 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or what I've done previously is I've function stitched I call it function stitch but you actually link it to a um, a VPEG and you can move that around literally on the screen you can actually move it around and the value of that in X or Y changes the port index it's sort of simple enough, but it's over complicating what you essentially want to do. You just want to say, I want to use that one instead of that one. Port indexes are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They carry on into infinity as far as I know. So what this allows you to do is essentially say, I want to control an element of this using a lever or a switch or a button or something like that, instead of having to go in to do all this sort of fiddly diddly nonsense. So what I can do is I can enable this uh, master controller, there we go, and I've now got this little lever and I can just go and you notice it creates a keyframe on the bit that I've changed, look, because that's, it's not the master controller's uh, keyframe as far as I know, though that might have one of its own anyway, no it doesn't, okay, um, it uh, just creates a switch change on the image switch like it would normally do um, but I'm able to manipulate that value of 0 or 1 here or 2 or 3 or 4 this could go on to you know 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 million you know now from previous experience I would urge you not to go down certain routes with an image switch they are fantastically useful but overuse too many port indexes and they are very heavy because even though it's at the moment at the current version of Harmony switching images they are still in the brains of the computer both being rendered so if you had a million different images it would render and then not show most of them so careful about using these using two or three or four image switch uh, ports great but too many of them and that starts to eat away at the CPU. So not a good idea, but fantastically useful for simple things like this. Really, really good. I'm very, very happy about that. And I can see so many instances where that could be useful, not just for an image switch, but for turning on and off uh, certain elements of a rig, um, turning certain uh, IK on and off. Things like that would be extremely useful. This is what you do and uh, if you're curious to know how on earth you set one of these up it's very very straightforward let me just get rid of this so you select an image switch for example and you go to what's known as the function wizard and uh, this seems to be a little bit of a bug but all you do is just hit retry a couple of times and it comes back and uh, for this particular uh, use I have to change it to um, now let me see uh, da, 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 show control. No, hang on. It's the slider widget because um, <clears throat> this isn't a digital thing. You can have loads and loads and loads of different port indexes. So it has to slide between one, several different values. So it has to be a slider for this to work. Uh, set value. I'm going to select that node and add it. And um, you can change how much of a value it can have. You can have a value of 0 to 1. You can have a 0 uh, to 5 value and anything like that. Say OK. And I'm going to attach it to this particular composite so that the, the actual uh, 
master controller itself is sort of attached to that bit. Uh, that's how it works. Got it over there, and this behaves like that. It took hardly any time at all to set up, and they are so useful. Another little addition to any master controller in uh, 20 is that now you have the ability to not have to keep turning the master controllers on. If you change its properties to on load or always, that will always show when you load it up. You no longer have to mine into master controller and sort of activate them. They can now be loaded up with the stuff and actually always can be shown as well, if, depending on what you want. On load has the ability to turn them off, always doesn't. So little tip there, really, really useful, love it. So let's turn off that. And now let's go on to another feature, which is uh, simple but marvellous, called the point kinematic output. Now let's go back to here. So let me see, are you misbehaving? You are. Right, hang on, I've got to go here and go to show, enable, okay, turn these off. There we go. Right, so we've got our point kinematic output example. Now this is a simple character, very badly drawn, but you get the idea, um, which comprises of several different bits of uh, character. They're fairly straightforward. They're just random drawings on their own. You can tell by these drawing substitution what they actually are. And uh, this one has a envelope deformer wrapped around the whole thing. Now, on previous versions of Harmony, if you wanted an element to be sort of attached to a deformer but not deformed by it, like, excuse me, like a hand on the end of an arm, you would attach something called a kinematic output which would allow the destination of the uh, deformer to sort of reach the, the bit, but it wouldn't be deformed by it. So if you stretch the arm out, the arm would stretch, but the hand wouldn't, things like that. Now the point kinematic output does that, but on steroids. So not only does it do it with a sort of chain, like you've had previously, you've had a chain kind of deformer, like a bone or a, a curve. This works with envelope deformers as well. So you can assign a point on an envelope deformer and still manipulate these things in whatever way you want. So for example, I'm gonna move him around, oops, just gonna extend the exposure there. <clears throat> I'm gonna move his top around and you'll notice the head stays attached and bends a bit as well, depending on you know which way I wanna put it in there we are. Um, now you can change that rocking, you can turn that off and I might just do that now because it's getting on my nerves. Um, as an animator, that would annoy me for this character, but for others. Um, I'm just going to turn that to one point sampling, and now I can move that around and it doesn't get affected. The button here is also uh, attached, and so is that one, and so is that one. And they have kind of different weightings depending on where they are in relation to the rest of the rig, and so that has as well. This is an incredibly simple character which has the ability to be squashed and stretched and goodness knows what without these being affected in any adverse way and you can still manipulate them individually if you want to and do all that sort of stuff. This would be really useful for buttons on a shirt, things like that where you need them to be attached yet not deformed in some way. Uh, incredibly useful, very very handy and easy to set up if you have a look at the um, the way this is set up, I have literally taken a point kinematic output and hooked it up without touching any setting and plugged it in to the deformed uh, body group. The only slight difference I had to do uh, is to change uh, the point where the, uh, the element is sort of stitched to the deformer, if you like. You have to select the kinematic output and select show controls. And you notice this blue dot. I can put that wherever I want to onto the um, deformer. So I'll show you that again, actually. Let's get rid of this so that it's... So this is how it is without putting a, a kinematic output uh, point on it. So you notice the head squishes and squashes and it, it behaves in a way that you don't necessarily want. You want it to kind of be its own little entity here. So if I put that on there like that, that now is attached, but it's not attached in quite the right place. It's not attached to sort of this area. 
That's because the point, which I'll show using controls, is attached here. It's like the head is attached to this part. I don't want that, I want it attached here. So once I do that, and um, I have to select that, and then there we go, I now have got it connected into the right place. So you have to do that each time, but really simple to set that up took hardly any time at all and that is I can see so many uses for that shoelaces on a deformed shoe cuffs on a deformed uh, arm things like that they can have their own little deformers on them as well but they are going to sort of work in relation to another deformer it's all the great thing about Harmony 20 is there are a lot of how do we make one deformer work with another one there's a lot of combining deformers so, and that is a thing that's always on a rigger's mind. I, I want to use it in this way, but I don't want to give up the properties of this to do this. How can I do it? There's a hell of, hell of a lot of new tools that you can do now with this. Case in point, the weighted deformer. Now, before, if you had a, um, a shape like this with a sort of texture in the middle, um, you would have you would run into this problem where if you pulled it bits of it would sort of splinter off and go all kind of peculiar and it it was something that <clears throat> you would get around by perhaps having this uh, center texture cut and pasted into the center of uh, a deformed object and then do something else clever with it uh, in fact in harmony 17 you had something called the uh, freeform deformer which allows you to put points on and you can manipulate the points and the center stuff would then manipulate in a kind of texture based way like it was cloth it was really really good the downside of the freeform deformer is that it still didn't have quite the same controls as this and you know sometimes it was annoying and also uh, the ability still to not have controls uh, anyone who's used the freeform deformer knows that you have these kind of splines coming off it which are handy to have but you don't always want to see them especially if you're doing micro movements they get in the way so um, this is the weighted deformer and it's the easiest thing in the world to couple up now I've put these on here which I'll show you why in a minute um, but you don't need them if in fact if I get rid of that and get rid of that that is the true way that the weighted deform is connected up. You literally just put um, the deformation into the left socket and the peg into the right one and then put it into the uh, drawing and it behaves. So I shall show you what I mean by that. You've now got this where the thing just does not break. I mean, it's still, it does a weird thing where it sort of goes back on itself like that, which you might not necessarily want. Um, but that's a lot nicer than not having it, which is this, is it? Yeah, which is that. Now, the reason why I did all of this, let me just go back a bit, is because uh, sometimes I want the ability to turn on and off. Uh, yeah, go away. Yeah, it's all right, don't worry. Hasn't actually done anything really dodgy there. Um, sometimes I want the ability to turn off and on Oh, yeah, it doesn't normally do that. There must be some other thing going on. Uh, anyway, to turn off the ability sometimes because um, it can be a little bit heavy sometimes using this, and I, it's nice to have the ability to uh, turn it off and on. This is actually built into Harmony, this uh, uh, enable, disable, open geo bypass uh, thing. Um, so if I can turn it off and on here pretty easily. Um, and uh, this is built in. If you want to get it, you can just go to uh, any toolbar and go to customize and go to open GL bypass selector dialog and put that in. Uh, it'll be TB open GL, not this one, TB GL. Um, and then it gives you this sort of handy menu to select and deselect certain nodes to turn them off. This is a useful thing, new to Harmony 20, the ability to search for certain tools, which considering how many there are, is a godsend, quite frankly. So I'm really happy about that one. Um, so yeah, this gives you now the ability to do that. And what I've done is I've put the OpenGL bypass here so that I can swap between an un 
weighted deformed bit and a weighted deformed bit. So that is weighted deformed and if I turn that on, which doesn't normally do this, it had to happen, didn't it, when I was recording. Um, it does the job, it just comes up with this annoying message. And then this turns it off. So it, it just allows you to manipulate it uh, comfortably without having to worry about all the processing. And then if you want to sort of quickly turn it on, you can do that. There we are. There you go. Didn't do it then. Now, now it's behaving. Weird. Anyway, never mind. There you go. So that's really handy. I love that. And um, here's another little thing that you can do as well. Um, weighted deformers can now have um, deformers of their own put onto the weighting or pegs. So um, let me do this. Enable, whoops. Enable, uh, come on. Ah, sorry about this. Turn off all of this, there we go. Right, um, so here we have a weighted deformer, but this time, oh, I've got it on the wrong one. Oh, flip it. Ah, it's annoying me. Wait a minute, hang on, wait a minute. Can I do it here? Wait, a enable. It's really misbehaving today. It doesn't normally do this at all. There we go. Right, okay. <clears throat> so now I've got the ability to um, put pegs. You notice on uh, here, uh, these are where the uh, pivots of each peg are. So you've got one at the top, one at the middle, and one at the bottom. And by manipulating these, let me turn on uh, OpenGL. Come on, you. Why are you not doing it? Strange, weird thing. Hang on a sec. Sorry about this, guys. Come on. That's it. Right, OK. Um, I now have the ability to manipulate the center texture by moving the pegs around. So that gives you another level of complexity when rigging a character. So this could be your buttons and you could have this as the area or a texture or whatever and you've got the ability to manipulate that now you at the moment i'm just manipulating the pegs raw but you could attach a vpeg to each of these a graphical peg to move them around and have exactly the same effect so you know you don't have to go into the node view and fiddle about you can you can do it all surface based as well so that's really really useful love it um, and to set that up is not difficult. You just put plug the um, peg into each one, turn that back on again, um, and uh, it sets it all up on its own, really. that's Those are the controls. I never touched them. So it's very, very quick to set that up, which we like. Lovely. Now then, here is the grand dame that everyone is getting very, very overexcited about. Here is what's known as the deform on deform. Now, annoyingly, let me just plug that in and move things around. There we go. Now, I created a simple rectangle with a few points uh, that I deformed in the conventional way. So this is so far so boring. There's, there's nothing particularly unusual about what I've done here. Imagine this was an arm or a leg or something like that. I've got something here that has allowed me to uh, manipulate the standard shape underneath, which is what we've had for many, 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 many versions of Harmony. What we've wanted, however, is the ability to not only manipulate, say, the outline of the object, but then have a sort of central bit to manipulate the bending of it. Um, we've had to do all sorts of clever ingenuity before to kind of fake it or to join two objects up and all the rest of it. Well, apparently not anymore. Uh, what you do is you create a deform on deform. Uh, and all that is, now let me turn that on. Come on you, uh, not that. Come on, there we go. Now I created this function switch uh, using the function wizard, and I thought I'd turned it on, but maybe I'd sort of, yeah, anyway, there we go. This should always appear from now on, but uh, yeah, weird. Anyway, um, if I turn it on, I've now got the ability to move the whole shape through the use of a kind of 
middle editor thing. And I, to be honest, the way I would use this, I probably wouldn't have a center part. I would uh, probably just have one at the end and one in the middle so that it was as smooth as possible. This seems to not allow for um, kind of joined lines, so to speak. But look at that, I can manipulate the thickness and thinness and make it thin, bulbous or whatever, and then manipulate the shape. Never been able to do that before. Now, um, I'll show you how to create this. It's very, very simple indeed. Um, but it's just a little bit sort of nuanced. You think, oh, okay, that's how you do it. Just get rid of all of these because they're not relevant. So as I said before, we've got um, a, I'll just neaten this up a bit so it's not quite as ugly <laughs> again. There we go. Try and make it as rectangular as possible. Okay, so essentially what the, this is, is a master controller laid over the top manipulating these very points, but in a clever way so you don't notice it. It's, it's still, in a sense, one deformer, but being manipulated by a master controller to create the, the overall desired effect. That's what's happening. So <clears throat> let us create this master controller. Now, if I'm right, you just select the, <clears throat> you select the drawing, you don't select the deformation and you select the deformer on deformer wizard. And then a but, uh, thing comes up here and says, create the center lines of deformation. Simple as pie, you just draw it like you would do a normal curve deformer, in this case, these two, and press done. There you go, and it's done. There's, there's really, oh, let me just select it with that. There's nothing more to it. <clears throat> now, it does have a few issues, which um, there's a it's, it's sort of a bug at the moment where it plays back beautifully. Look at that frame rate, 25. It's fine, no problem there. But when I scrub, it's still a little bit slow at the moment. So I would recommend that ad in addition to this wonderful thing, at the moment, you also create a uh, function wizard to go with that. Let me just uh, accept that a couple of times. And um, now let me see, uh, do, 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 do. show hide node controls, that's all you want. And uh, call it controls, there we go. Uh, that should be it there, okay. I'll attach it to this particular uh, uh, composite. <clears throat> and now I've got the ability to turn them on and off pretty quickly, or I should do, oh dear, wait a minute. Uh, oh, hang on, I know why. Oh, no, I don't. Ah, hang on, sorry. Should have worked this out before I started talking about it. Sorry about this. Come on, you. Ah, hang on a sec. I think I have to attach it to that. Wait a minute. Let me try again. Uh, do, 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 do. There we go. Yes, yes, that's fine. Right, okay, so checkbox, hide node controls. Ah, no, 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 I know where I went wrong. This, let me go into the actual um, group that this controls. So this is the group that the deformer on deformer has actually uh, created. And uh, this is a very eccentric uh, series of bits and pieces, most of which you don't have to bother with. However, this particular node, the MC deformer on deformer, is the master controller. The rest of it is the stuff the master controller uses which it creates when you create the deformer on deformer uh, wizard. Um, now this is the bit you need to manipulate. So what you do is you select that and then you go to the function wizard, say retry a couple of times, whatever, and change it to hide or show or hide control nodes. And select that, that's fine, Con call it control, yeah, okay. And I'm gonna attach it to where I wanted it to be before. <coughs> So here it is here, and uh, let me just attach a peg to this so that I'm not uh, getting on my nerves. There we go, put it somewhere useful here. You could always attach it to that main rectangle so that it sort of moved with it, or you could put it on another display or whatever you wanted. Either way, so long as it's out of the way, that's all you want. And now I've got the ability to turn them on and off, and that means that I can scrub quite happily without the implications of that slowing down. So for example, if I put a, uh, uh, <clears throat> a, a peg here and I uh, turn the controls on and then I say, okay, I'm just gonna, oops, just gonna manipulate that to there or something like that, then obviously when I'm scrubbing at the moment, it's horrendous, but then if I turn the controls off, 
I've got the scrubbing ability again and I can turn them on and off really quickly. Whereas before to turn them on and off, I'd have to sort of, it's very tricky. I have to kind of go here and it still doesn't work. I don't know, it never really behaves itself. To do it properly, you have to mine right in and then go here and turn it off using the controls or you go to the master controller thing, which I have to be honest, I prefer not to go anywhere near because I find it a bit frustrating, if I'm honest, to go uh, not there. It would be that one, wouldn't it? Um, <clears throat> uh, to go here and turn it on and off every time. I prefer to have a nice little button. And they're so simple to set up, and I've told you how to do it now. So that's at least made it more uh, viable until they can fix this annoying scrubbing uh, bug because uh, it's annoying and the, the thing is even when you've got them turned on the playback actually is unaffected so it's obviously some fiddly little bug which they'll I'm sure they'll fix fairly soon but in the meantime that at least gives you the ability to use this amazingly useful feature so um, the only other thing left to say is that you've now got the ability to quickly ease uh, stuff which I'm sure other people will be delighted by. So um, previously you had to go into, not there, previously you've had to go into set ease for multiple parameters and you've had to sort of do things like this to change uh, the timings of things, or you've had to select a kind of curve here. Now you've got the ability to change your ease, uh, so slow to fast like that, so that should, there we go, you see that? And that one I want from, Maybe I want a bit of that, so it sort of it'll slow in and out to both sides. Hang on a sec. Maybe I want that one. That's it. So it's, you've got that kind of smoothing out at the end there. Now these have the ability to. This one's got a custom ability to change the percentages really easily, um, but you've also got the ability apparently to change uh, a keyboard shortcut. So um, let me just find one. Yeah, quick ease in and out. So you could assign that to a keyboard key and uh, they will uh, ease it to 33% automatically. So if you're finding you're having to do this an awful lot, you could just hit a key and it would do it. So that's really useful. And another one that's really useful as well is the ability to turn on and off stop motion keyframing just by pressing that. Massively useful, simple little idea, it really works really well. One other quick thing as well is something called the snapshot. So if I go here and I say, oh, I really want to reference this particular frame on frame, let's say, what frame are we on now? From five. So if I snapshotted that and then went to frame 16 something, I can view that previously snapshotted frame just by holding down on that button which for referencing on loops and things like that could be tremendously useful. Uh, so again, I really like that little feature. It's another one they snuggled in really quickly and it's, it's tremendously good. So um, I think that pretty much covers most of all the big things. There are a few other bits and pieces. Um, it's worth checking out the, um, the uh, sort of, uh, what do they call it? The overview of features that they've put into Harmony Harmony 20, uh, which is available on the Toon Boom website, um, but that is extremely concise. Uh, considering this is one upgrade, and we've had, I think, for 17, they they upgraded, they kind of they kind of tidied a lot of things up, and they they improved the under the bonnet performance of stuff. Certainly, Master Controllers behaved a lot better and things like that. But this is a massive, great glut of features most of which are extremely useful. Um, so I can really see the benefit of, I would say 100% of them, <laughs> quite frankly, they're all gonna help. So um, I would, if you've got a license for Harmony, which uh, allows you to download the latest version, download it and have a play with all of these amazing things and get used to them because they are gonna be extremely useful. Um, Hope you guys are all well. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my Patreon because there is a rather nice guide available uh, that can show you all kinds of amazing things on how to use uh, Harmony 17. And this will also apply for this, but I haven't yet updated it to all the new 20 things because it's only just come out. Cut me some slack. Um, but uh, yeah, 
it's uh, it's a pretty useful thing. A lot of good feedbacks coming back from it. And um, if you are new to Harmony and you're wanting to get into how to it, how to know how it all works, it's not a bad place to start for rigging. Uh, that's me plugging it over. Uh, hope you guys are all right. Hope you're keeping safe and all of that stuff in these very troubled times. At least there's a nice little ray of sunshine in the form of Harmony 20. So let's stay positive, folks, and do all sorts of lovely, yummy things together. Hope you're well and speak to you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>